So, in the previous class we were uh, we talked about an example of pre play communication and uh, one of the, the the we actually looked at a paper of uh, Robert Oman and uh, we what we saw there was uh, that pre play communication and or a pre play non binding agreement to play a particular equilibrium may not imply that the players will actually play that equilibrium. Okay, so then uh, that effectively told us that Nash equilibrium need not be self enforcing. Right? Now, what I uh, will talk about today are models of where an, an element of communication is involved during play. Okay, so communication during play, communication as, as part of game play. Now, what do I mean by communication as part of gameplay? This we need to uh, be uh, be very very clear about. Now, in any game, obviously, when there is a when the game is dynamic, some information gets passed from one player to the next player. Usually, it is about the action of the player or something like that. Okay. Now, that is not exactly what we mean by communication. Okay. Now, what we mean by communication is communication is usually what we mean by that is some uh, is some decision that a player takes which is not translating directly to its cost. Okay. So, we make a distinction between two different things in games one are what are called actions, the other are what are called signals. Okay. So, so decisions can be of two types. either actions or signals ok. Now, there could be other type other types also which you can say well are contracts and so on, but we will come I will come I will come to that in a, in a at a later stage. Now, what is the distinction between actions and signals? The action both of these are decisions ok, players take some decision in each of them action is that which appears directly in the cost ok, it appears directly in the payoff. So, when you take an action it actually incurs you a cost. Signal does not appear directly in the payoff at least in the simplest case. There could be cases where signaling is also costly, but that let us leave that aside. Signals basically do not directly appear in the cost. So, what is the role of the signal if it does not affect the cost? The role of the signal is that it affects the information of the other player. All right. So signals are are decisions or some variable that uh, a player conveys to the other player, and that affects the information that the other player knows. So through signals, a player affects the information of the other player. Through actions, also he affects the information of the other player, but he also affects his cost. A signal solely affects the information of the other player. All right. So signals are therefore information carriers, and this is these are actual actions that lead to impact the cost. All right. So let's let's look at a let's look at the simplest such game, which is what is called a sender receiver game ok and then from there we can we can take special cases from of it. Sender receiver games. So, sender receiver games have the following structure. There is a, a sender of information, he has access to some information ok. Let us say for the moment let us just keep this uh, let us keep this simple here is a he has access to some information. Now, sender must send this information to a receiver ok. So, this goes to a receiver now receiver takes this information uses this information to then decide what it must do what the receiver should do all right. So, the receiver is actually the one that takes an action ok. 
okay. So, the receiver takes an action right and this action that the receiver takes determines the payoff of both sender and receiver right. So, this decides the cost payoff of both of both players. So, the sender does not have an action of its own ok, sender does not take any action of his own because the sender sender what sender can only do is control what the receiver gets to know ok. Receiver on the other hand does not have any information of its own, the receiver only can take an action based on the information that it has received from the from the sender ok. Let us take uh, let us take examples of this setting and we will start uh, you will start seeing you know what uh, many different variations that are possible. Now, in uh, in in the economics literature these are studied under what are called principal agent models ok and when this is goes into the domain of what is called contract theory. So, I can let us go over that for uh, some examples from there. The simplest example is where there is uh, there is no asymmetry of information ok. So, in this case, so the simplest example let us take game 1 which is no full information Now, what is this setting? The general setting is as follows. The general setting is that there are two players a principal and an agent ok. So, players are principal comma agent. The uninformed player the well the, well, the player who does not have information is usually referred to as the principal ok. So, this guy is your what we call the receiver, but in this case there is going to information will be trivial, but nonetheless this is we can liken this guy to be uh, the receiver and this fellow is your sender. So, this essentially the principal is the uninformed player uninformed player this is an extreme case obviously, he could be less informed than the than the agent and all that stuff can be incorporated if necessary the agent is the informed player. Okay. Now, what is the idea the idea is here the way we are the model in which we are going to study this is where the principal is committing first ok. The principal commits its strategy first. Now, the the way we should think about this is that there is a principal who is let us say a manager ok and the agent is a worker. The manager wants to get work done out of a worker ok. But and and so what it does is what the manager does is he announces a reward scheme that if you do this much work then if you put in this much effort this is the amount I will reward you with and so on ok. That now, the nature of what the reward scheme is uh, etcetera is basically becomes the subject of uh, or it gives you different types of models all right. Now, essentially the the problem therefore, is that the principal has wants to get a certain task done and it must delegate this task to an agent ok, because it cannot directly observe the you know the situation the the environment needed to achieve that task right. So, the agent might be so, uh, if you want to take a cyber physical system type of context then the principal could be uh, could be a, a uh, some sort of an fusion center and the agent could be sensors that are actually observing uh, that are actually sensing the field. They are the ones that get the information they need to send this information over to another uh, to a higher uh, level aggregation of, uh, center or a fusion center where this where this aggregation will be performed ok. So, the point is the the problem for the principal uh, is is ok how should I be rewarding the agent in order to achieve the get this work done ok. So, let us take the simplest sort of case what the principal will principal does is let us say he offers a contract principal offers a wage 
W which is a function of the effort E. So, this is your wage W and this is the function of the effort E made by by the agent. So, the this is the order of play. So, the the principal offers a wage which is going to be a function of the effort that the agent uh, that the agent will be. So, what the principal is offering is actually a function ok. The principal strategy this W is his strategy it is a function. It is a function which says that if you make so much effort I will give you so much money, if you make so much effort I will give you money etcetera. So, ok. Now, now the agent has the, the because this is a this is a contract type of setting there is an additional condition that the agent has the we, we uh, the the in the economic literature they take what is called they put in this condition of what is called participation. Essentially, the agent has the option to accept or reject the offer. All right. And if he accepts, if he accepts, then he has to choose an optimal effort level E. Level E or E star. So, in the case where there is full information, what is happening? Why is this a case of full information? The reason this is a case of full information is because the principal is offering a wage as a function of the effort that the agent makes. And the assumption here is that the principal can observe the actual effort that is being made. So, let we will come to this in a little more detail, but let us think about uh, let us think about each of these things uh, one by one. Now, suppose so uh, let us suppose the agent makes an effort E, agent effort is E. Okay, and then for, uh, from there, that gives uh, you know the uh, the monetary value of that to the uh, to the principal. The value of this effort to the principal is let's say Q of E. Okay, this is what the uh, principal uh, uh, gets. Uh, this is the value to the principal. So what the principal is. The well, the the uh, the the payoff that the principal receives payoff of the principal is a function is is a function of the effort that uh, so the value that it has received from the effort. And minus whatever it has paid, paid the agent for the effort. Okay, so it has paid W of E for the effort. Okay, so it's a function of this. All right. So this is the net money, uh, net payment that it has received Q of E, and it has paid uh, W of E. The uh, the net is therefore Q of E minus W of E, and V of that is its a function of that is its uh, is its is the payoff that the principal receives. Now, as far as the agent is concerned, remember agent has two choices, he can either accept or reject and if he accepts, then he can talk of ok, how much is the effort that he makes right. So, what we can think of the way we can think of this is that the agent for the agent to make and uh, to accept, he has what is what we can say is a reservation level utility. So, if he, if he, he needs the utility at least of a certain level in order for him to accept uh, accept the contract. Okay. So, it is some base some bare minimum utility that he needs otherwise the con uh, otherwise it is the uh, you know getting into this contract is not worth it ok. So, it is some some threshold level this could be derived from some whatever comp what the competitors are paying or whatever does not matter, but some le reservation level utility that he must get and this the agent gets agent utility. is a function u of the effort he makes and the wage he receives ok. And usually it is assumed that this 
in u of e comma w this is assumed that uh, this decreases with e ok more effort means uh, less utility and increases with w all right. So, the agent utility is this and we we assume that there is a reservation utility that means he must uh, he, he needs uh, some basic level of utility otherwise the whole thing is not worth it. So, you so he needs u of e comma w of e to be greater than equal to some u bar where u bar is a reservation utility. So, now if you think about this problem now tell me how should the agent play. Maximize what? Hmm. In no. Hmm. Hmm. Maximize uh, maximize this, okay. Theek hai, all right, you maximize this, okay. Then, all right, fine. We uh, so the agent maximizes you, all right. Then, how does the principal play? So, let us let us ask, okay, what is the uh, what is the uh, what should be the um, uh, how should he find uh, what should w the optimal w satisfy yes what else this is of course it must satisfy this reservation condition or what is called the this is also called the participation constraint so let me ask you this suppose there was no participation constraint okay suppose the uh, agent had to participate ok the, the agent had no choice he had to accept the contract then what would the what would the principal pay him zero he would in fact be in minus infinity so so the reason this condition is put here because is because it is it you have to prevent slavery if without this essentially what uh, in fact minus infinity is a solution you can pay him minus infinity he has no choice he will just keep he make some effort right whatever effort yeah but minus infinity gives you infinity as payoff so you basically take all his all you take all his money essentially That, that those are separate that is a separate matter even if it is bounded below you go you hit that bound. Uh, but, but that is the point right. So, essentially without the participation constraint this problem is actually ill posed because it effectively means that you can extract as much money as you want from an agent because he is bound to you can give there is a there is a trivial uh, there is a trivial maximizing contract in which the agent pays you to to make him work. No, 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 whatever it is I mean it is it is there is always this trivial contract right because we so we will be we is the payoff it is a it will keep increasing with uh, with with this with this argument. So, I can keep making w as large as I want. No, even if it is, uh, even if it does, the point is if see the if you make v w w can be made as large as you want, the matter is over. I can even make w a constant minus infinity. You are charged minus infinity to be in this <laughs> to to be uh, uh, to do even if you do zero effort, you have to still pay me minus infinity, right? So this so without this that is the answer is actually trivial ok. Now, now you can ask yourself ok well then if there is if this is the important constraint here then what how should this how should the um, how should the w be determined well you so the the principal will not pay will not may cannot charge minus infinity 
but what he what would he do then well he will charge him the bare minimum to make sure that he is in the contract he accepts the contract right so so the w w star the optimal wage would be such that this is always equal to this, identically right so effectively you can solve for this 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 equation here and get w star from here as a function of u okay you want this to be identically equal to uh, equal to u by it's the bare it's the minimum uh, value of it's the minimum wage such uh, minimum wage as a function of the effort that makes this equal yeah for all u because we are allowing it to be a function of u all right now having done this essentially the the what has happened is that the agent has nothing to optimize because his his utility is now constant he is always going to get the u u up u bar itself right because the wage has been fixed in such a way that u of u of this is equal to uh, equal to u bar there is nothing for him to optimize so any effort is uh, any effort gives him the same amount of utility right okay so so then effectively what uh, wh what we can say is well what the the maximum value that or payoff that the principal can receive is then maximum of of this because all the efforts are uh, give the agent the same utility so the maximum that the age that the principal can receive is this okay now there are more uh, more variations one can make on this uh, and you can uh, dive deeper into this but that's that's not the uh, that's not the direction i want to go in the thing i want you to uh, uh, appreciate here is see what's the way this contract is based okay the what's the information that the principal has the information that the principal has is that he he can actually observe the effort that the agent makes okay which means so suppose this uh, this agent has been told to go and uh, you know uh, survey survey a certain area okay it's some drone you have to survey a certain area you can actually observe whether he is he is gone to this is gone to that etc etc no you may think this is some kind of a silly thing but it's actually a very very important thing you know today in fact um uh, sales agents that uh, come to your home you know maybe lic or uh, you know whatever sales agents that come go from door to door they have to keep their uh, they have they have usually an app installed and they have to keep that app on because their the company monitors whether these guys are actually going to the in fact um, to the said locations or not okay they have to keep that app on and it keeps reporting gps locations and so on because they want to the company wants to monitor if you, these guys have in fact visited these locations so the the reason this because this is becomes important is because now what happens if you if the principal cannot observe e okay so the effort that the agent makes is not observable uh, is not observable by the principal then you start getting into all sorts of problems yeah 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 so this is this is this is the best he can get yeah nothing that's why this is this is a kind of degenerate problem because of this reason because uh no so firstly we are the, we are in a sequential setting okay so we have to uh, so we would have to solve this stackle in a stackle bug sense so there is a declared contract and then there is a response hmm you what what happens here is if you you are being on a delivery carry or deliver then then the agent can make any effort in the yeah yeah so this is uh, yes so that is that is also true okay so it is true that the agent can make essentially any effort and uh, and then that's uh, that's that right so that so so that is also true so this is this is the maximum he can get it's also the minimum he can get 
you can also find sorry you can also compute correspondingly the minimum that you can get ok all right. So, now let us look at a different version of the of this thing. Now, let us suppose you have another another case where the where the principal cannot observe the effort ok. Now, so, so what are the two things that the principal could observe here? One here we are assuming that the principal could observe the effort all right. The, the what is the other thing that the principal could observe? No, that is known, but as a during gameplay, what is uh, what can you observe? So here's 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 a here's a possible uh, possible alternative. See, think about the ob objective of the principal. The principal cares about Q of e minus W of e. Okay, W is what he decides. Q of e is the value that he gets out of the effort. Now, you might ask ok why does the principal want to know what the actual effort is, what he cares about is the value right. So, long as the principal is uh, so long as the agent is, is going and doing enough sales for you, why do you care if he has gone to this house or down down how much spend time he spent talking to the customer, whether he is visited every house etcetera, etcetera. What matters is that he has got he has sold enough items right. So, Q of E is the value that of the effort that that the principal gets out of the efforts of the agent. Principal does not get uh, money from uh, uh, effort itself does not give him money. What he get effort results in this in Q of E and that results in uh, benefit to the agent. So, you may say well then another approach is that I can that the principal could base his way the wage on what on q of e rather than e ok. So, that is another type of model. So, there now the contract is not a function of of the effort because uh, not a function of the effort, but a function of the output ok. So, that results in another type of problem ok. But let us take a f extreme case first before we come to that let us uh, let us take an extreme case where the principal can observe neither effort nor output. Okay.